Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. It's Ken Tracy. It's 8.16 a.m. It's December 18th. It's a gray sky outside. I think it's 36 degrees. I think it's going to be a gray sky and like 36 degrees all day. Good morning, John Schurenberg. Thank you for watching today. You were my first person that tuned in, and I never tune it, or I never start talking until somebody's watching. Otherwise, it would be lonely. And people would accuse me of being crazy because I was talking to myself. Hello, Scott Cooper. I was just talking about you, Scott Cooper. Might even talk about you again in the show. But anyway, thank you all for watching. It's Saturday morning. Uh, it's 817. Now I better get talking and stop saying hi. Hi, Rob Murphy. Thank you for watching. Uh, I was a minute late today. I got up at about 620 today which was the latest I'd slept in in a, you know, at least a week. I'm getting too far ahead. Uh, my name's Ken Tracy, and this is Saturday Morning Coffee with Ken. It's a little show I started about two and a half years ago. I was in a dark place, a dark apartment, struggling with a lot of issues in my life and relationships and problems and vices and things I was coping with, anxiety, depression, alcohol abuse, all sorts of yucky things. And I felt bad. And I uh, realized I've always known that talking about my stuff and getting stuff off my chest always made me feel a little bit better. And for some reason, I started doing it live on Facebook. And for some reason, people started watching. And for some reason, people started liking what I was saying. Hello, Bill. Thank you for watching this morning. And feeling good. Feeling they weren't alone. Feeling that... Uh, I don't know, I was somehow inspiring them to, you know, just through my sharing of my experiences, because I got a whole lot of life experiences, good, bad, and ugly. And, uh, excuse me, I'm just getting comfy because I'm going to kick back and have my coffee in a minute. Uh, but anyway, I was willing to share my experiences in a way that most people wouldn't. Uh, most people post on social media beautiful pictures of them on vacation, drinking a fancy margarita with all sorts of fruit in it. And I'd be real, I'd be just talking. <laughs> while drinking some coffee. And speaking of coffee, since the show's called Saturday Morning Coffee with Ken, uh, one of its, uh, my co-star is always my nice hot cup of coffee. And uh, what I always like to say is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you have a hot cup of coffee in front of you. Hope you have, uh, you know, 30 minutes or so to share with me this morning and to talk if you're watching live, uh, cause I want the show to be interactive. And, uh, you know, I posted on my Facebook profile, so I have a sort of limited live audience, but I will share it on various other places. And if you're watching from a various other place and you ever want to get involved in the conversation, please send me a friend request on Facebook. I'd love to accept you. We can always use more friends and then you can contribute or be involved in chit chat with me or the other people that are talking. So anyway, back to the coffee. Here's my hot cup of coffee. I hope you have one as well. Somebody just liked my video. It was Rob Murphy. Thank you, Rob, for liking and loving my videos. And if anyone ever likes enough what I'm saying, please share it. I'm getting ahead again, but please share it. I want to bring my message to... I don't even know what my message is. <laughs> I want to bring my words, my thoughts, my feelings to more people because they seem to make people feel good. And I like I feel good when others feel good. So anyway, back to the coffee. I hope you have a nice hot cup of coffee in front of you. I hope you uh uh I'm gonna I'm gonna get ahead of myself. Cheers to us. Oh it's hot. It's hazelnut coffee this morning. Costa Rican sunshine in my cup this morning. Well, that sounds good. Don't know if I had have had it. I'm sure I've had Costa Rica Costa Rican coffee before. Uh, I was drinking some Colombian earlier. It's kind of funny. I used to have a rule. There was only one rule I'd say to Saturday morning coffee with Ken. And it was said, I don't get to have my very first sip of coffee on a Saturday morning until I push live on Facebook and start talking. I got rid of that rule because I was waking up earlier. And waking up earlier, and it was punishment. I'd have to sit around my house and wait for eight o'clock so I could drink my coffee. And those were hard times. You know, I got a morning routine. I do the same thing every day, every morning at least. And one of the 
Oopsie, if I drop my phone, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the right angle so I look good. Um, what was I saying? Oh, sitting around my house wanting to do my morning routine when the highlight of my morning routine is just drinking some coffee. Stunk. So I changed that rule and I dropped it and now I'll drink coffee before I start talking. Uh, and this is actually my third cup of coffee. For anyone worried, don't be. I always have a fair amount of coffee, so... <sighs> it's out for seven minutes and I've talked about nothing. Anyway, how are you guys doing? How's your week been? How's your morning going? You excited about the weekend? <laughs> You're looking forward to the week ahead? Anybody excited about Christmas coming up? I've seen a lot of people posting on Facebook uh, that they don't feel in the holiday spirit or they're not excited and I don't know if it's because we, uh, thank you, somebody liked it because you get up so early. Hey, Christine, I slept till 6.20 today. It felt great. Uh, I hope you guys can rally your spirits. I'm trying to rally my spirits. I was just talking to a buddy and was talking about the special gift I want to get my two daughters. They're, one of them's on Facebook, so I don't want to tell you what it's going to be, but I think that they're good. They're a little more money than I was hoping to spend, probably can afford to spend. Uh, but they're my daughters and I love them very much. And rather than shop around and buy a bunch of things they may or may not want or like, I'd rather buy them something I know they're going to like. And even if it's spending a little more, they're worth it. And, uh, I think they'll something they can use for a long, long time. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do it despite maybe not being able to, shouldn't spend the money right now, but I still want to do it. So that's me. And just thinking about those gifts got me more in the Christmas spirit. And thinking how, I don't know, I think they'd be excited to open them up. And it reminded me of all the good times I had and the good experiences I had and the excitement I had for opening my gifts when I was a little kid. And I still like gifts. I'm a little awkward when I receive them. I go, Ooh. Especially if I don't love them. Thank you for this ugly sweater. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I don't have any. I don't have any sweaters, much less ugly ones. But anyway, back to you guys. How you doing? You probably won't answer me, so I'll keep talking. I probably have a whole lot to say today. I often have. Hello, Sheila. Thank you for watching. Not sure if you watched before, Sheila. I think you have. Sorry, I get a lot of people tuning in. A lot of people have been watching me for years, which I appreciate. It means a lot to me. Uh, for people that follow along in my story, and I care about my story. And with that in mind, I had a I had a great week, and I did a lot of great things. And I'll you know great things. I don't want to pat myself on the back too hard, but I felt very good a lot during this week. But there was a couple hard times, a couple challenging times, <laughs> times where I needed to reach out to somebody and uh, know that I'm not alone, and that I had people that cared about me and. Uh, that uh, I had people that would be willing to meet me out and talk and hope, you know, hopefully talk about themselves. But again, these were my hard times and my challenges, and I was probably doing most of the talking, but uh, I promise I can be a good listener. Um, you know, but I could get some stuff off my chest. And uh, a few days ago, I met with a new friend, Laura. And we had a cup of coffee and we talked for an hour and a half or so. And, you know, she's dealing with stuff. We're all dealing with stuff and going through experiences and having experiences, good, bad, and ugly sometimes. And it was nice. She's a nice woman. And we talked for a while and could relate on a lot of things we were facing and dealing with. And, you know, it's just nice having somebody there. Uh, that you can talk to. And I've said it before, if you ever need to talk to somebody, you can reach out to me if you're feeling down. You can send me a message on Facebook. You can give me a call, 630-697-0536. <laughs> I'm a realtor, so if you ever want to buy or sell a home, you can call me as well, 630-697-0536. I so rarely plug myself or plug my business because, I don't know, it's not what feeds me my passion or gets me excited or gets me out of bed in the morning. It's writing cool posts and shooting cool videos. 
Uh, speaking of posts, I wrote one this morning. Felt pretty good. I wrote one almost every day this week. I've been writing a lot over the last couple months. And again, they're kind of written versions of this show. And uh, just kind of me waking up you know, in various emotions or various feelings and various things I'm facing and various stuff going through my mind. And sometimes I wake up anxious or stressed or excited or sad or happy or angry or whatever emotion you can imagine. I'll wake up with it sometimes and I lay there in bed and have all these thoughts going through my head and feel in all sorts of different ways. And I'll go, hey, <laughs> you know, I'll think of a word and I'll go, wow, I woke this morning thinking of today it was acceptance. And there's a reason I came up with that word and I'll touch on it in a minute. I'll break out my computer. I'll type away on my keyboard. I'm a really pretty dang fast typer. Probably the most valuable class I ever took in high school was typing because I can really move my way around the keyboard. Um... Yeah, and I was talking about some issues I was facing and challenges I was facing. And I wrote a post about it this morning, and it was about acceptance. And I think acceptance is really important in our lives. And it's really, uh, oh, hold on. Lest I forget, I talked about Laura. I also want to thank Scott and Carla, who met me out last night. Never met them. Scott Cooper. <laughs> I'd never met them before. They'd seen me on a street. They were in a convertible. I was on my scooter going the other direction. I hear, hey, Ken, <laughs> in downtown Naperville. And I get that a little more often than I'd expect. But anyway, I look back and there's some strange dude. And I don't know, was it a Mustang convertible or something? And he was yelling at me down the street. And I go, hey, you. And I rode off on my merry way. And I don't know, a day or two later, I got a message. Hey, Ken, that was me that yelled at you on the street the other day. And it was Scott Cooper, who uh, watches a lot of my shows and contributes. Sometimes he contributes more than I'd like. <laughs> but we talked about it yesterday, and I think we're all good, and we have an understanding. Um, but anyway, it's awesome. And he came out, and we... He and his wife and I talked for, I don't know, probably two hours. We sat at Starbucks and got our caffeine on. Hello, Matt Odom. We got our caffeine on and talked about things and shared some stuff. Again, I was probably doing most of the talking, but they seemed interested. Uh, it's always interesting when I meet. Good morning, Jack Taylor. Uh, speaking of all this coffee, peppermint mocha sounds awesome. I'm drinking some hazelnut. Let's have a little more coffee. Um. Uh, but anyway, we talked for a couple hours, shared some stuff, uh, got some advice from them, which was nice. It was asked for, and uh, so it wasn't unsolicited advice. And uh, I appreciate it. And we kind of came to a conclusion how I was going to face the challenges I faced yesterday and some, face some issues that I'm facing. And, and it was through acceptance and... Uh, Accepting people who they are, for who they are, and accepting relationships for the way they are, and accepting situations that we face for just how they are, and accepting the world as it is. For instance, like it's gray and cloudy, and some people wake up, and I'm sure I've done it before, and go, oh, it's gray and cloudy outside, it's 36, I hate December, it's yucky, it's ugly, there's no snow on the ground, what a horrible day. And that doesn't feel good. That's not a good way to feel or be or wake up feeling like. Because if you're feeling that way, it can't be. You can't be feeling too good inside. So rather than fight the weather or fight the relationships or struggle with the situations you're in or battle with the world, just accept it for what it is. And I think I went to bed kind of with that in my mind. And I think that was key for me getting a whole lot more sleep last night and sleeping better. And, you know, I, woke, I wake up, I'm 53. I got to go to the bathroom a couple times a night. Uh, and instead of my heart racing, I said, hey, I'll just accept all this stuff. And thank you, Jack Taylor, for liking my video. Only had three likes so far. I must be saying crappy stuff this morning. <laughs> nah, my stuff's always fun. At least to me. Makes me feel good. Hopefully it makes you feel good a little bit as well. 
Uh, so anyway, yeah, I was, uh, I realized over the last couple months, although I'm doing all these good things and feeling all these good things and sharing positivity and posting nice things and being open and being honest and being the best version of me and not having a drink and we're working on two months now. So doing all these good things, there's times, you know, I feel great most of the times. <laughs> I would, you know, I wake up excited and feeling good and ready to do good things and excited about what I'm doing, my work I'm doing, my videos I'm shooting, my writing I'm doing. And, you know, even the real estate I sell. So, you know, I had a closing yesterday. So real estate's good, even in December, by the way. Um, got an offer on another home. But again, I don't want to talk about real estate. Um, so, yeah, accepting the way things are. And not trying to change people or fix people. Or even change relationships or fix relationships. I was meeting with an old, old friend yesterday. A guy I went to college with. And he bought me lunch, which was nice. And we met at Panera. And I started saying, hey, you know, I want to go in this direction. And I wanted to talk to him. And I wanted to tell him why and my feelings. And we butted heads in the past a million times. Because I'm not one that wants to get a ton of unsolicited advice. You know, if I'm asking for help or needing some help or wanting it, you know, I'm going, hey, what should I do? <laughs> But sometimes you just want to be heard and, you know, I just want to be heard sometimes. Maybe that's why I do this show, because I get to talk and you got to listen. You don't have to listen. You can tune me off. You can turn it off. It's 18 minutes I've been talking already. But sometimes you just want to be heard, and I know that's for me. <sighs> and he started chiming in. And I've gone, ah, I barely started talking and you're telling me your thoughts and your opinions and what I need to do. And I said, hey, friend, maybe I'm not asking for your opinion here. Maybe I don't want your advice right now. Maybe I just want to talk and let you know how I'm feeling, what I'm hoping to do. And I don't mean this in a negative way. I'm accepting of it, but I'm also realizing it. He goes, well, I'm going to tell you my opinion whether you like it or not. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I don't want your opinion whether I like it or not. Frankly, if you got that attitude, it's abusive. That's my opinion. And I said, hey, don't tell me that. Stop telling me that. I don't want your opinion right now. I want to talk. And I realized I was trying to, he was trying to change me and I was trying to change him. I was trying to change him from an, an advice giver. I was trying to change him from telling me his opinion. He wanted to tell me his opinion. Damn it, he was going to tell me his opinion whether I liked it or not. <laughs> so I got up. I took my lunch that he paid for. I sat at another booth. And it was okay. Because I realized he's an opinion giver. He wants to tell me his thoughts whether I want them or not. And that wasn't okay with me. It wasn't okay with me yesterday. And honestly, it's not okay with me today. You know, it's not. Maybe I'm too sensitive, but that's okay. I'm accepting of that. And I'm accepting the, that. You know, I'm okay with that. So, and he's okay with who he is. He's doing great. He's got a beautiful family, a successful business. Why am I trying to change him? He doesn't want to change. He's happy with who he is. I'm sure. I'm happy with who I am. But when we get together, we butt heads. So I came to the conclusion, maybe we shouldn't get together right now. <laughs> maybe we should have a little space. Because it's been going on all my life. I don't know who's liking this. I was worried I'm getting... BJ, thank you for liking this. And if anyone else wants to like my stuff, please do. It makes me feel good. Um, I'm begging for it. <laughs> I need attention. I'm going to have some more coffee. Cheers. Uh, so it wasn't even just this buddy. I, it happens with my dad. It happens with somebody very special to me. And I want to change them. And I want to mold them to how I want them to be. And I want our relationships to be perfect. Thank you, Mr. Wickard. And I want our relationships to be the way I want them to be. And frankly, they don't seem to want them to be that way. No matter how hard I work, 
how hard I try, how hard I want people to love me for who I am and not tell me how I should be. Maybe they don't want to do that. And maybe I'm trying to change them just as much as they're trying to change me. And that's a stressor on my life and a struggle in my life and would cause me to cry. I was crying in Starbucks yesterday. <laughs> I cry a lot. Not every day, but many days. Um, and that's okay. I like that. I like who I am. It always feels good to let out a cry. I don't think it makes you less of a man. Maybe it makes you more of a man because you're in touch with who you are and your feelings. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. I was angry at my friend. But the anger was eating me up inside and it was hurting me. I don't know if he's angry, but it's like swallowing some poison and trying to hurt somebody else. And it doesn't work. It just hurts you. So I needed to let go of the anger and the resentment and the will to change somebody else or even change the relationship. Because all you can do, all I can do is be the best I can be and be the most loving, caring, open guy I can be, the most true version of me, the sober me, the me that w wakes up excited about the day, the me that has a clear head every day and feels good and feels passionate and feels his emotions. Someone once told me, be open to suggestions, especially when you don't want to. You can make that choice. Colleen, I disagree. If there's one thing, I disagree, and it's okay. I disagree. <laughs> suggestions are one thing, but I disagree. It didn't, doesn't make me feel good, and I want to feel good, and I want to be me. So I disagree, and that's okay, Colleen. We can disagree, and I'm okay with that. You know, if that works for you, <laughs> it was causing stress for me. And I just don't want to deal with stress or conflict. I don't like it at all. And I don't want it. You know, if, I, if, if I'm open to suggestions, go ahead and give me one. But if I'm saying, hey, right now I don't want them, don't just cram one down my throat. Because <laughs> I'm not going to like it. And I don't think anyone likes it. I was talking to my brother. Sometimes my brother and I have the same challenges. It was a couple months ago when I was really, the poop was really. Yeah, Colleen, but it's good. We have our feelings. What's really hard? Colleen, a friend of mine that I haven't seen in 30 years or 25 years, we used to work together at Gronto when I was a stockbroker. When I thought it was cool because I had a ton of money and I drove a fancy car. Still drive a pretty nice car. <laughs> but anyway, um, when I had more hair, just said, uh, what'd she say? Feeling feelings is hard. Yeah, it's hard, but it's therapeutic and it's good and it's healing and it's positive because you got feelings. And I used to cover up those feelings with drugs and alcohol. I think a lot of people do. <laughs> a lot of people do. I was at a bar last night with the Coopers after Starbucks. We were there for two hours and we went to the Lantern and it was packed because uh, North Central, the local college uh, team was playing in the national title game. They lost, I don't know. 50-something to 20-something. And, uh, I don't know who is he, who is, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, you guys are talking. I love that. I love when you guys talk. So anyway, I went with Scott and uh, Carla and had a good time. I don't know what my point was. I don't know, having a clear head. I was watching around the bar and there's people drunk and there's people I could tell had been smoking pot. And it just felt good to have a clear head. And not use drugs and alcohol or to mask my emotions or to cover them up or to feel better. Because it doesn't really make you feel better. It makes you feel numb. <laughs> and numb sucks. <laughs> numb sucks. So I wake every day with emotion and with passion and with the zest for life and ready to embrace those emotions and passions. Where, you know, a few months back I was hiding from them and trying to feel better and I drink or smoke or do yucky things and it feel better for a little bit and it works till it doesn't work and it stopped working. I started getting miserable and sad and depressed and angry and bitter because I'd been built hiding, burying those emotions under drugs and alcohol for so long. And when I say drugs, I just mean pot. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. I always share these to YouTube. I make them public. I don't want to get in trouble, but it's legal in Illinois. But I do it every day. It was stupid. I still drink coffee. Cheers. 
So what's my point? It's okay to create some space. Oh, it's okay when you realize patterns in your relationship. Um, thank you, Mark. Uh, I just read a comment, but I appreciate the comment. And I appreciate you guys for watching. But it's okay to give relationships room to breathe. And accept relationships for what they are. Not always try and fix everybody or fix everything or, you know, just, it's okay to accept things the way they are, but it's important to know the way they are. And if you're with somebody and you spend a lot of time with them and you always feel crappy after meeting with them, maybe you should stop spending so much time with them. And I've certainly made that choice uh, about somebody very near and dear that I was struggling with. And we would struggle every day. We resented each other. We were afraid of each other. We'd struggle every day. Every day we lived in fear and anxiety. And that fear and anxiety grew to hate and sadness and really ugly emotions. And I decided last night I'm going to give it space. I'm going to give it all the space that it needs. I'm going to give it so much space. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much space I'm going to give it, but I'm going to give it a whole lot of space. And it feels good because I've been feeling good over the last several weeks and doing great things, but I've been allowing things to creep back into my life, things that shouldn't be in my life and bad relationships and bad feelings and bad stuff. 100% agree. Even closest friends can leave me feeling any. Yeah, Jack. And that's okay. Jack just said it's a... Even his closest friends can leave him feeling uneasy. It's hard with people you work with. I don't mean, I, don't, I can't read the rest of it, but it is. And you can still love the person. I still love the person I'm talking about that I'm going to give all the space. I still love her. I'll always love her. <laughs> but I'm uncomfortable around her and she's uncomfortable around me. And apparently my buddy that I'm with, that I'm always butting heads with, because he always wants to tell me his opinion, and I just want to be heard. And I'm not going to change him, and he's not going to change me, and I'm not going to change her, and she's not going to change me. And I've decided I can't change my dad. He's going to be my dad. And I wish he'd do different things, and he'd hug me, and he'd tell me he loves me, and it's going to be okay, and he's proud of me, and all these other things, but that's not who he is. So rather than me fighting with my dad, going, Dad, tell me you love me. Tell me you care. Tell me you're proud of me. Maybe I got to stop looking for that and just feel good about who I am and what I'm doing and the path I'm on. <sighs> and that's my thought for today. You know, stop struggling. Stop fighting. Stop fixing. Stop mending fences. Because I've been trying to do that all my life. I've been trying to... Make people love me and appreciate me and feel good about me. But I shouldn't need that from them. I should have it within. I should accept those relationships for just what they are and those situations for just what they are, situations. And I can't control, I can only control myself. I can only control how much coffee I drink. I can only control who I am and be the best version of me I can. And love hard and feel hard and feel my emotions and experience them and accept them and accept the people in my life. And I don't mean hang out with them necessarily because <laughs> I'd probably be abusive to them and abusive to me. And that's yucky. Who wants to be abused? I guarantee I don't know many people that do. So accept the situations and the people and the emotions and the feelings and not try and fight them. And yeah, it is what it is. And just accept it. And that's always been real challenging for me, very hard for me, because I always want to save people. <laughs> Sounds so vain to think about. They probably don't want to be saved. And my advice might suck. <laughs> you know, my what I'm telling them might stink. It might work for me. It might not even work for me. Colleen, thank you. I think you just liked my video. I'm begging for it. I appreciate it. Likes and loves make me feel good. Again, I'm insecure. Mark, thank you. 
give your best to others and take what's an offer from us. Yeah, maybe. But again, I uh, feel good uh, about that. And I feel good about my day. And I feel great about my week. I've uh, done some great things. I've done some cool videos, some personal videos. I've, I've learned more about a new app, TikTok. I don't know if anyone's on it. I don't know. The content on there, I think, sucks. Whenever I turn it on, it's some weirdo lip sync in some video. Everyone says you got to be funny on there. Everyone's, you got to be fast. You got to be funny. I'm not fast. I'm not funny. But I got a message. I got a voice. I got something I want to share. I got to share it a little quicker on TikTok than I do. I've already talked for 31 minutes. Um, but I have a voice and a message to share. TikTok allows me only three minutes of sharing. So I give it an abridged version of TikTok, on TikTok of this Coffee with Ken every day. I talk for two and a half minutes. And it's getting to a new audience. Not a big audience yet, but hopefully a new audience. And hopefully it'll resonate with that audience. And if it doesn't, that's okay. But I've learned something. And it feels good to learn. It feels good to get better. Feels better, you know, when you learn it, when you're, if you if you stop learning, you start dying, you know, and if you stop improving, you stop dying. And I'm trying to learn as much as I can and be the best me I can and learn about things that I enjoy. And I know writing cool posts and doing cool videos and sharing my experiences feeds my soul. And I get all these messages. Oh, thank you so much. I needed to read this post today. It really made me cry or made me think about my mom and you expressed it so beautifully. And oh my gosh, I feel the love you share about your son or whatever post I wrote at the time. But that is what I love doing. And that is what makes me feel good and feeds my soul and gives me excitement and passion for the day. So I'm going to leave you with that. I wish you a bit of excitement and passion for your day. You know, you don't, don't have to take my advice. It's just there. You can tune me off. You can say, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm never going to watch Coffee with Ken again because he's a bald fool. But I'm still here and I'm going to share my experiences and you can do them with, with them what you want. You have the power to tune me out. And again, I'd recommend if you got people in your life you can't conflict with all the time, maybe stop trying to fix it. Just maybe tune them down a little bit. Even tune them off sometimes for a period of time. You're going to find a lot more peace in your life that way. I know I slept better last night just going, I'm going to tune that person out for a while. <laughs> I'm not trying to be negative at all. I hope this message wasn't negative. It's not negative. It's one of hope. It's one of avoiding conflict. It's one of being the best you can be, at least I think. I know it for me, that's what I got to do. So I hope you face this morning you know, we got the whole day ahead of us. I hope you embrace this day, whether it's cloudy. I don't know. I got people in Britain watching. I got a buddy in India that watches this. So I don't know what the weather's like, where they are. But if you got a gray day outside, don't take on the day. Don't take on the weather. Don't take on the world. Don't take on your relationships. Don't try and fix anything because you can't. All you can do is be the best version of you. And that's what I'm going to do today. And I hope you are the very best version of yourself today. I hope you have had a, had a wonderful, wonderful week. I'm going to take one more sip of coffee as I'm signing off. Cheers to us. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope you have a great Saturday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and you fill it with moments of love and emotions and experiences and family and friends. Um, and you hug your kids. And that despite maybe the issues you have with your parents, let them know you love them. Uh, I know when my girls reach out to me and say they love me, it means a ton to me. And it feels so good. So I'm sure it, I'm going to send that to my dad right now. You know, I've talked about it before. Fortunately, I got my computer here. Where is he? St Stephen Tracy. I believe in doing it now. I get so many people. I'm going to even give them an I love you, Dad. I just sent it to them. I get so many people saying they're going to start something next week or tomorrow or next year. Do it now. <laughs> but anyway, I'll leave you with that. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I hope you have a uh, wonderful weekend. I hope you're excited about today. 
I uh, hope you're feeling good. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I hope I appreciate you guys because you guys are why I'm doing this. I know it makes me feel better, but I'd probably get bored if I was just talking to myself. But just the engagement I get is great and the messages of love and people reading my posts and sharing my posts and feeling good about my posts and sending me messages that what I said resonates it always makes me feel good about what I'm doing. So anyway, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day today. I hope you enjoyed your cup of coffee. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this morning. I hope you're feeling good. Uh, and I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great week.